welcome to That Wrestling Podcast. Welcome to That Wrestling Podcast. The good bad guys of wrestling podcast are back talking all things of the week that was in professional wrestling. For the second time this week, too, we had our review of the the Toxic Tuesday as uh, myself and Jason, the A-team, if you will, uh, checked out AEW. It is, not if you will, it is the A-team. Mm-hmm. We are the A-team, not if you will. Uh, Dusty Rhodes shouting. Oh, no, Mr. There. T. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, you will on that one. No. <laughs> Shut up, Joe. No one cares. I'm Coney Ton. I gotta go. Bye. Co- Coney, I'm sure we'll hear plenty of throughout the night. Um, Kevin and Joe, yeah, they took care of the monumental. I've heard it dubbed the NXT A show. WrestleMania. Is <laughs> I heard it called it. I think it was pretty appropriate. We're going to touch on that. Uh, a little bit more, kind of the aftermath uh, at the next day or, or so after the Tuesday night in just a few minutes. But we're going to go back first a little bit as the gang's all here. Third and last time week, in a row we've been all together. Third third time in a row. for This is amazing. Uh, streak. It's like the Undertaker streak. Come Dedication streak. Is, is through the roof right now. Mm-hmm. And um, when we did have the, the first full show back last week, we talked about how Kevin and the family – we're going down to Indianapolis for fast lane. So we'll we'll talk a little bit about the show in a moment, but I just want to hear Kevin, your experience. How how was it? How did Brett do with it all? Just give us the whole rundown of being in the building. Yeah. One, uh, if you've ever been at the uh, arena downtown Indianapolis, beautiful arena. It's very, it's very steep, right? It's not very uh, how can I put it? Like length and width, right? Not that large. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a large, large capacity, uh, arena. Um, it was a lot of fun. It's where totally the Pacers different. play, right? It is, the it's Pacers. where the Pacers play. All right. Uh, Shout out to Chris Mullen. That's good. Yeah. Reggie Miller. Really? Yeah. Chris Mullen. Shots. Uh, he's Chris a Mullen. warrior. Yeah. Um, Never left. It's no totally love for Detlef Shrush. Yeah, <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally different experience. No respect to left shrimp. Versus, say, like a SummerSlam <laughs> where we had in the summer, right? That was in like massive amount of beers, hanging out, guy time. Uh, you know, this is more family oriented, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Brett, seven years old. We we hit it off right. Went right to the fast lane store. I've always wanted, you know, that Hulk Hogan wrestling buddy growing up. Never got one. Uh, so. I beeline to there, spent my 40 bucks while was it a superstore or just a store? It was just it was almost like the size I would imagine, like of the fast lane like store. A, yeah, like a Mr. Bulky. Do you know what that is? Like a, a very sm- small you mean the Bulky yeah. Bartakamos? Mr. Him? Oh yeah. That was great. Perfect stranger comment. That's nice. Don't be cousin ridiculous. Larry. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Don't be relevant. Ridiculous. Uh that no, it was, podcast. <laughs> So, so we, we spent a little money on merch, go to, uh, uh, the arena. Jay threw it out there when I texted everyone, Oh, did you buy fake seats? Cause we tried to scan our tickets and they got flagged. They were just like, uh, it, unusable ticket or something. He's like, you have to go check out the, the box office. So when we bought them, we were like in an angle, but they deemed it like partial viewing maybe because of the massive amount of lights. Cause we were first row upper deck. Uh, at the angle looking at the screen, but now we got put like row 10, uh, on where the cameras were not camera side looking right at you, but upgraded seats. It was close. It was the closest I've ever been to like a PLE event. Uh, uh-uh. so it was, it was uh-uh. pretty awesome. Uh, closer than what I've gotten us at PLEs. Is it close well, from SummerSlam? Any of the SummerSlam? Well, that the distance, that's a football field. This is a basketball arena. So it's just just the the distance from seat to ring was you know, short. That serious of a question. You look very nervous right now trying to answer. I that. was nervous. <laughs> I was a little nervous. <laughs> uh, well, if you would have came to right payback, thing. you would have been closer because we had really close seats there, and that was a hockey arena, which is basically the same as a basketball arena. Yeah, yeah. You done? Oh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm I'm not just done. So so the event starts. Uh, I won't go into every match. Just sitting next to a seven year old is 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 the best. Just seeing the excitement for him doing this when Jay Uso, you know, with the arms, the double eight mile arms. Cody, 
everyone cheering. My one thing that I thought was kind of odd, the crowd was crickets when EO physically came out. And then during the match, you know, a lot of a lot of EO chants, but I kind of felt bad because I feel like our family was like one of the only three of 10 people who were actually cheering on EO. Uh, but the crowd was hot. We rewatched the pay-per-view. Rewatching it, I'm like, okay, it's a subpar pay-per-view, I'd say, on the rewatch. But live, it felt like a hmm. five-star event just because I felt like the crowd was 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 hot from the beginning uh, all the way to the end. I really enjoyed it. But I was I was curious think, about that based on like being there versus uh seeing it on Peacock. Well, like fast lane, Joe. I mean, it was a good pay per view live, and I don't know, I don't even know if I even I haven't even watched it on. We went to payback. Kevin went to fast lane. What did I say? You said fast lane. Payback. It's like payback, Joe. It's the same kind of thing. It's like a smaller event, but it felt good and great in the state in the arena. Uh, but I haven't watched payback on on Mm-mm. Peacock yet, so. That's cool. It sounds. I mean, it sounds like you guys had a great time. The real question is, obviously, you and Kev, or you and Brett, bought the stuffed animals. Did Laura get anything? Nothing. Laura, no. Nothing. Wow. Like did she wear the gold dust mask. She did. She did say. <laughs> or the she, stardust mask. <laughs> she does. She loves Shinsuke. She's like, why mm. couldn't they have a Shinsuke plush in there? Oh. So. She's but, wearing her shirt. I saw but, from the social uh, media. Post. But, but, yeah. Yep, exactly. So, so we were we went against the wall. She's like, she's like, Brett, you stand in the middle. Kevin, you stand by LA Knight. I'm gonna pretend like I'm hugging Shinsuke's face. So <laughs> she loves herself some Shinsuke. So to get to your your kind of uh, evaluation of the show, Kev, that, uh, it's kind of my next point was, you know, when we were previewing it, we were like, well, there's five matches. I, I would think there'd be something else, but. There ended up not being. It was five matches. The the show was two hours, 45 minutes. I mean, it was really less than a Monday Night Raw. I mean, I guess we'll start with you and we can all go around. I know Jay said you, you didn't quite watch all of it, but um, like, how did that length feel? Like, did it, did it feel like you were missing something? That it was like, oh, we're all done when, when Shinsuke and Seth came out for the main event and then it was over. You see, my, my personal opinion on this it felt perfect because there really wasn't many one-on-one matches except for the title fight. Like there yeah. was the three way for the women's two uh, tag team style matches and the, the six man tag. Like it was a lot of people trying to get their move set in, you know, for the energy. If it was just five one-on-one matches, I, maybe it would have drawn out a little bit having a half hour per match, but totally the, the event seemed like it was a very fast pace being there live uh, on the initial watch. I loved it. It was, it was perfect timing to be honest. I'm actually surprised it went that long. I was, I was fully thinking it was going to be like two and a half hours. Yeah. Joe, what about you, man? You're watching that at home. I thought it was good. It was okay. It was Mm -hmm. probably the most forgettable PLE of the year. Cause Kevin nailed it too. There was like really only one singles match. Everything was a tag team, triple threat, so it felt like a shorter raw, uh, already forgettable. Forgettable. No match really stood out as being like, oh, rewatching. Yeah, actually, I think if I I had to say the best match of the night was uh, the triple threat women's match. Okay, um, and and that was uh, Eo. I think pinning Oscar on yes. that one uh, for the win. So my my declaration of you um, rejoicing over Charlotte taking the pin. Uh, and yeah, but Oscar was ta- but Oscar was tapping, but the ref was out. So that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Charlotte might have something to say about that come Friday. So we we had that. We had Cody and Jay as the new champs. We had uh, Carlito is back. He he um he thought shrimp was cool when he was at St. Elmo's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> up at, later on at night at the <laughs> arena. Um. Seth Rollins survives, and uh, again, guys, I'm, now I'm 0 for 3. I, I'm begging for Damian <laughs> Priest to cash in. Like, it's a last man standing. The dude's a- incapacitated. Damian Priest just backstage, you know, oh, I lost my tag title. <laughs> but Rhea said not to. <sighs> Mommy's boss. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not a fan. Not Did a fan. Uh, anybody find it weird that? 
Carlito waited till midway through the match and got new music. Kevin, how did yeah. that? Oh my god! The, the music, the music was the weirdest thing because the music started and I'm just like, huh? And then you start yeah. Car- Carlito on there. I, I, I want the old school music. Maybe it's the the whole spitting thing. I I don't know. I don't think it's that bad. Is they I don't mean, make the innuendos that much I do, anymore. I do but, find it weird that the other two LWO guys just weren't there. They weren't part of this. They couldn't have been a tag partner, which I'm wondering if this is the beginning of the, the dismantling of the LWO. I'm going to yeah. make a bold prediction right now. They're going to turn on Ray sooner than later because yeah. of Santos still not getting the U.S. title. You know, he was supposed to wrestle for it and he got hurt. Ray took his place and won. Santos didn't beat Ray. So here's a bold prediction. They turn on Ray, but they're still the LWO. Mm-hmm. The yeah. Legato World Order. Yeah. Oh. Bring back the Legato name. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Carlito's in the mix now. I saw he was added to the SmackDown roster on, on the website. Had so. a new shirt, which I new not- shirt is already out. Yeah, it well, was on the what, website that night. What was the classic like Carlito shirt with the you hat? Do you that- spit or swallow? Spit or swallow. Spit or swallow. Spit My God, there was a blue one, which was the first one when he came out, and then the yellow one had That's the, the one swallow on the back. Yeah. My God. Did Endeavor know about this when they bought WWE? <laughs> well, Holy while God. we're talking about Carlito, I'm going to go to eBay right now, and I'm going to see if there's any yeah. of the classic uh, shirts there. Let's take a look at that. Kevin, real quick, I want—I didn't know, too. Did you guys stay in Indianapolis that night, or did you make the trek back home? Because why not? We can make it, or what? We drove home. Wow. So what's that? How, about, how long of a drive? Hour, hour, yeah. hour and 45. Okay. Not too bad. No, it's not too bad. Okay. Uh, so there is a yellow shirt. It's got a, a apple with what looks like Carlito's face on it. It says, do you spit or swallow? And uh, as of right now, it is uh, 129 or best offer. 129 or best offer. Or best offer yeah. four bucks. <laughs> no, because I don't know what size is. Uh, let's see. What the, there was a blue one. It says, I spit in the face. People don't want to be cool. That's classic. Um yeah. Hundred dollars for the blue shirt, the classic shirt. Uh, there's an orange one. It says "Eat Spit." Uh, it's like got a cartoon <laughs> Carlito. <laughs> uh, we used to watch this all the time, and we were like, "This is fun, amazing." Yes, um, that's pretty much it. I'm Did glad Carlito's and- back, though. Fun. You guys might know this because I don't. Did so, him and Chris Masters ever have a combo shirt? Because they were a, a, oh, like a thrown together team for I quite don't a remember. bit. Uh, well, I will pull up uh, eBay and see if we all type. Remember in. the team? Well, yeah. if Y2AJ oh. could have a combo shirt for two weeks, <laughs> anyone can. So that was that was a record. So mad I didn't buy that. Uh, no, because <laughs> they shirt. took it down and gone. It was done. Yeah, it's like the retribution shirt. I wish I'd have bought it. Um, nothing with uh, Carlito and Chris Masters. Just like uh, like the no. Saint Prison DVD, and um, for some reason, there's an autograph <laughs> picture of Kane. Uh, and some sure. so, yeah, but everyone I, should have an autograph picture of Kane. Don't you have an autograph picture of Kane from the Marchuka crate? Uh, uh, no, I don't have Kane. I think I got Dean Malenko. Oh, well, I know. I thought <laughs> easily I easily confused. Same thing. They get confused all the time. <laughs> Both Dean the Malenko and the Greg the Hammer and Greg the Hammer <laughs> Valentine. <laughs> Both, <laughs> Both the, over a thousand moves. A thousand holds in a tombstone. <laughs> wow. Well, all right, Kev. I'm glad you and the family had a great time. That's amazing. <laughs> We'll quickly move on to Monday Night Raw. The only thing I really wanted to just get some thoughts on. Um, is what's been going on with Drew McIntyre for the let's say this last month? Uh, he's in this very interesting to me this character development of he's not a heel, but boy is he not going to go out of his way to helping anybody else, especially when it comes to Jey Uso. And and he set his sight on Seth Rollins. 
He uh, made the call out, and it'll be him and Seth for the championship at Crown Jewel in early November. I want to know what you guys think, because I have really enjoyed this character development from Drew McIntyre, and I, I'm interested in seeing where it goes. Look back, don't help Drew is my favorite Drew yes, McIntyre. Yes, that's at this the way. Point. So, I mean, look, I think that, you know, heel Drew is a fun Drew. And we're in a spot right now where we don't really have that many heels that are cool and fun. Like the Judgment Day. Yeah, they're bad guys, but I just don't like, I don't see them as bad guys. Like, even though they are bad guys, if it makes any sense there. Uh, this is what needed them. <sighs> Drew has been good guy you know, for a while. You know, we need the Scottish psychopath. We need the guy that dumped dog food on Roman Reigns. Like, I want that guy back. I want Drew to be look back, don't help, put dog food on Roman Reigns. Like, <laughs> Drew, that's the Drew I want. And no skirt. Lose the skirt. Yeah. Well, Keep what, the skirt. What's your thoughts on this Drew and the chest hair. character arc here, Joe? I love it. I love it, but I don't see him as being a heel. I see him as being like the the tweener. It's like he's doing what anyone would do. It's like you guys, like for th this whole bloodline thing, what is it, three years now? It's what he like did, like all sarcastically. No one's come out and helped anyone when they're getting beat down by the bloodline why does he have to be the knight in shining armor i like what the miz described him as if cody's superman drew's batman batman just basically mm -hmm. takes care of his own business so like if you're going comic book wise or whatever but i love this drew this is a drew like coming back i and what do you do like two weeks ago he said like oh i guess i'll apologize i'll like do something bad and then 30 seconds later say sorry and you'll all forgive me so whatever oh that like, was great I, God, like I this that. this is the best true like this is better than the uh like any drew i've seen i i i love the scottish psychopath but it kind of got worn out that's the, it was getting too many cheers this one's gonna can st still keep getting cheers but not have to change to the white baby face anymore he can still be the tweener the whole time so keep this true for a while <clears throat> and kev you're, you're a fan of all this yeah i am and and yeah. i'll keep it short and sweet uh, so on monday night raw he mentioned i want you at your you know your 100 percent seth i i don't want you while you're you're down a little bit crown jewel is three weeks away he's going to attack seth from behind he made a very good point. I'm not going to attack you from behind. I want this. I want you at your best. He's going to play nice, and then he's going to be that heel before Crown Jewel. He has to be. He has Why? to be. Why? He can't be. Why? Because Seth is so, so popular. You can't have somebody getting cheered as well as Seth. I think you need somebody to get the booze. Especially, it, it, shit, I thought Shinsuke was going to beat Seth that second time. They're not taking the belt off Seth for Shinsuke. And, and Shinsuke is kind of in the rear view mirror now, kind of as a pass-through little program. Yep, I don't want to see Drew as a pass-through. And if, if he's a positive ooh, or a, a sort of, you know, that tweener situation, I think he'll just get passed through, passed by. I want to see a badass heel Drew. Take the belt off, Seth, and let's actually boo the fuck out of him. Thank you. It's early, obviously, yeah, because it just started been, it was on only Monday, in there for ten minutes. <laughs> but I'm I am interested to see where it goes and yeah. feeling because I had similar feelings like you, Kevin, of maybe I actually would give this to Nakamura, right? Um, and I think you could get that place with Drew if not make him the clear favorite, but. Mm. I don't know, man. The triple the Triple H era is known for uh, the long title reigns, other than the women's tag titles, <laughs> which is, <laughs> that's, that's its own world. Hey, don't be yes. mad. Don't be making fun of my girl Chelsea, okay? I'm not. I'm not making fun. But what is this? Her third partner now that she <laughs> the titles with? Second or third, at least. All right. Well, cool. We're we're all on the same. The page longest reigning women's tag team champion. <laughs> <laughs> she did it. She, she, she did, did it. it. I don't think she's had a match since winning it, but whatever. A tag not, match not at a least. Tag oh. match at least. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. All right, guys. Well, let's talk about the the fallout from Toxic Tuesday, the Tuesday Night War. Again, we touched on it. And if you didn't, uh, check out our, our bonus pod that we did that air uh, that got dropped you know, very early Wednesday morning. As, uh, again, Jason and I watched AEW, Joe and Kevin watched NXT. So we don't really talk about ratings. It's not really our, our deal. That's for somebody else. For one night only. Yeah. That for one night only. Podcast talks ratings. Absolutely. So, Kevin, get the sounder. Man, what is wrong with your microphone now? Everything. Kevin, underwater. Don't keep throwing the, the microphone. Do it right there. <sighs> no. No, like. There you go. Deep throat the mic. That means you can't. It doesn't work that way. Don't deep throat. There it is. Um, NXT. 921,000 viewers in the the ever uh, talked about 18 to 49 demo, a 0. .30. AEW, 609,000 viewers in the ever popular 18 to 49 demo, a 0. .26. So that was a big talk about online. How's this going to be? The WWE NXT was, again, I touched on it, NXT WrestleMania. You know, with all the special guests who were there, and there was AEW saying this is uh, Adam Copeland's first match. It's the like the biggest title Tuesday. All these things, and the clear winner was NXT. And, Shut your mouth! Oh, here it comes. Look, here it comes. Co it Coney Khan, everybody. My name is Tony Khan. Coney Khan. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? All right, here's a deal. If AEW had an Undertaker or Cody Rhodes or an Austin, You did. You did. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, if he AEW had those characters, they would have beat NXT. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I saw your YouTube video. I watched late Tuesday night. Because I know you a-holes don't like AEW. And I knew what you were going to be doing. I don't appreciate it. Well, so, Cody, you thought AEW was the clear winner on Tuesday of night. I do. <laughs> you still do. you all day. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know math? I mean, we don't talk ratings, but like, you know, this is teacher and you're super smart and blah 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 but Shut like up. how how are you gonna spin this because like yeah. i've heard i've heard your rambling online about like you oh they had to bring up about you joe nothing nothing and I, you know well, what's really funny though because of my appearance on this show last week the amount of offers i'm having to show up on other podcasts is insane but as much of a group of a-holes that you are thank you I'm loyal to you oh wonderful so wonderful i will blast. not be making any other appearances on any other podcast except this one and, and maybe aew unrestricted or whatever their podcast is if only has me blocked they won't put me on that show oh, i think well, it's rj city i think he's the reason why they won't put me on that show <laughs> oh, Tony, Tom, i gotta go bye well before wait, wait, coney if we could get you for one more minute what do you I, want I, this isn't I, in my appearance deal one more well, question hurry the hell up yeah I'd love to get your reaction because Tony Khan, a little bit salty about the ratings that came out. And he put out this tweet today that, as of uh, recording, has 4.2 million views. This is out there. And Tony puts it like this. This week, two active decades-long rating streaks from two great legends were ended. With all due respect, until this week's head-to-head -head AEW on TBS versus WWE on USA, neither John Cena nor The Undertaker had ever been on a WWE show with under 1 million total viewers and under 400,000 in the demo. Coney, I would love your reaction to that tweet. Hey, you guys think I'm fucking crazy. Tony <laughs> is a goddamn nut job, and I'm here for it. I'm Coney Khan. I gotta go. Bye. 
Wow. That that has, as you heard, guys, it has gotten a lot of traction. Uh, some may say sour grapes. So, so, some may, you know, I don't know. What, what, some what may tell the truth. <laughs> he, I guess he is telling the truth. Yes, in, in, in factual terms. Okay, what so he's saying that under he's saying Undertaker and John Cena got under a million, and that's correct. like you know sad. How many ex WWE guys were on that title Tuesday that yeah. got under seven hundred thousand? They're yeah. AEW superstars. They don't count as ex WWE guys anymore. And yeah, I'm back. Their <laughs> but their names their names were built like, in the house that Vince built. I drink another beer or something. What what was that, Joe? Their names were built in the house that Vince built. John Moxley Tony has it on WWE. What was that? John Moxley was never on WWE. He's not a no. WWE guy. No, he was, a lo- he was a lunatic Joe before. Not a WWE oh, guy, God. Joe. We're doing, we're doing that? Okay. I gotta go. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Continue, Joseph. No, Continue. it's sour grapes. It's totally sour grapes. Yeah. It's a whole vat of sour grapes. And I didn't even care because what you guys said Tuesday night, it was it was a Are good sour show. Sour grapes, the white grapes. Oh uh, yeah, I think white sour. Yeah. Okay. Like the green? No. Are they green no. or are they white? Because there's there there's like purple grapes. Yeah. Yeah. Those aren't sour. You know, they're made by white grape. Green, I guess, white, yeah. Well, either way, I think Never it's, <laughs> it's very childish of what he's doing, and this is like, he, he got beat, and he's being a poor sport. Yeah. It was a one-night-only thing. Move on. And can't he just, like, see the gra- like the forest beyond, beyond the trees and just, like, embrace nature and say, this was great for wrestling fans? Almost two million people were watching wrestling on a Tuesday night. To him, though, that's what we should be focusing on. What was that? To him, WWE is sports entertainment. AEW is pro wrestling, so it is different. It's not; it can't just be happy for the wrestling fans because it's two different things. Ted, I believe it to him. Tony's gone, so I can't even ask him about it. But yeah. What about you, Kevin? Yeah. He's got some truth behind it. He does. Facts. Right? But little little punk comments at the end of the day. This is the thing. I went back and I watched Dynamite. I thought there were some pretty damn good parts of it. Yeah, what'd you like? like I wanted to ask 100%. That. Swerve Danielson. Good. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, amazing match. Amazing yeah, match. You I, right I would say that. that was my my highlight of that entire thing. <clears throat> One of my lowlights, and I hate saying it, I hated the ending to Luchasaurus Adam Copeland. I just wish it was a straight match, no shenanigans. Let Adam okay. Copeland win his first ever match on AEW. Clean, middle of the ring, badass spear. None of, none of the shenanigans. I thought it yeah. kind of cheapened it. That's what I had mentioned the other night. Like the way that was going, uh, I thought maybe there was going to be another debut because they tend to do big, you know, with big events and big shows, they have big moments and a, and a debut or a return would have been perfect for that spot to help Adam Copeland. But unfortunately that didn't happen. And it was just, you know, mass chaos. It was still, it was exciting still to see him in the ring in, 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 you know, interacting with, Luchasaurus, and it'll be excited to see him in the ring with with future people. This was a little cheapened. I felt I felt like I didn't get oh. exactly what I wanted from so that. You can say it could be a case of blue balls. Yeah, I would say that was more like a a, a, a rated PG superstar match. It's a rated R. <laughs> that is but. a rated AC show, right? Yeah, AC match, rated AC match. <laughs> right, Brian. <laughs> yeah, that rated would make AC. sense there. Exactly, as we try to get the name correctly. Uh, and not have the the siren buzzer, um, yeah, guys. I mean, you guys said it best. It, it's it's sure it's factual, but it, it's so sour grapes. And it reminded me. I pulled this up. It, very... it reminds me of something that one of us would have done. A fan would have done, not the owner of the yeah. company. This was the uh, release that came out from when NXT and AEW went head to head for the very first time, and I guess that was twenty nineteen or early. Yeah, it had been early tw- or late 2019, I believe. 
because they just had the four-year anniversary. This was from WWE. This was their official statement. Congratulations to AEW on a successful premiere. The real winners of last night's head-to-head telecast of NXT on USA Network and AEW on TNT are the fans who can expect Wednesday nights to be a competitive and wild ride as this is a marathon, not a one-night sprint. I mean, listen to that in context of what Tony Khan just put out. Come on, it's nine days. Class act. Crazy. Oh. Yeah, class act. Exactly. Basically tipping their cap to AEW, and then we got Tony Khan doing that. And then, and I did a little, uh, you know, my comment on when I saw that was like, okay, now you could say that same line, Tony, about less than a million. Now you can say that about Adam Copeland. You know, because he never had those ratings, like you said, 609,000 on WWE. So what does that have to say about you? He well, you know what? The the show was good. Tony Khan put out a great product. But these these uh, tweets, he gets the button. Congratulations. You played yourself. Yeah, it's really well said, man. It's it's annoying as hell. He makes it tough sometimes to be an AEW fan. It's like, shut the F up and just have your shows and do your thing, man. But. That's I love what Jer- did you see Jericho's tweet about the ratings? No, <laughs> the demo God has returned because the one segment for <laughs> AEW that beat NXT was when it was Jericho's match against Powerhouse Hobbs and the Brawling Brutes on NXT, and it was by like you know a point zero one. It was like so yeah. close, but it was like for that he's like the demo God, and it just he <laughs> posted a picture of him getting beat up, like punched in the face repeatedly by Powerhouse Hobbs. <laughs> But that's I'm like, awesome. you know what? Jer- See, Jericho doing that, cl- that's that still works. He wasn't right. sour grapes He's about it. He's gimmicks. like, you know what? I got the ratings in, not the other guys, but it was awesome. That, if it's that on the laugh. internet, it, it must, must be true! And, and I think that to um, that keep on that same line of uh, thinking there, Joe, I think I, I read that the one... That was the biggest distance. It's just an interesting thing, I think, to me, was um, Dragonoff versus Dom, and that was head to head, head to head with uh, Hangman versus um, White. Jay White. Jay White. That had the biggest difference, which I just thought was interesting. Me and Jay thought that was maybe the best match on AEW. Um, so you know, it's the old. What do the fans want? Do they want the sports entertainment? Do they want the wrestling? And you know, they probably could have got it both with either of those matches but just an interesting head-to-head note that wow like that was that was a big deal on AEW and well I mean I think this just proves that Tony Khan should listen to Kevin and have the Adam Page Adam Cole Adam Copeland trios match Uh, or it could have the all-purpose Brian Cage Christian Cage Adam Page Ethan Page inside of Steel Inside this team, yeah, I mean, that'd be the best way to go, too. So, and Soraya can be there as she was Paige, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, she would turn the page. Turn the page. Why not? <laughs> oh. Let's just quickly touch on the SmackDown season premiere uh, that is later on Friday night. And uh, the two things that they've really pumped up is hey, Roman Reigns is back. Um, he is he has even made less appearances on SmackDown than all four of us on a podcast. Um the this maybe is this maybe his first time since SummerSlam? Like <laughs> legitimately? I, I feel like he showed up right after SummerSlam and maybe then the first one after, yeah. yeah. I didn't know he still worked. Yeah, he that. showed up he showed up the week afterwards because he uh, offered uh, Jimmy Uso like you want a yacht? You want a car? Oh, that's you got right. it. Yep. Yep. Good memory, Joe. And then he got kicked in the face by Jay when he quit. He's like, deuces. That's right. Okay. So, yeah. So, it's been quite some time. So, we're getting Roman back. And there is a uh, is being uh, titled a Triple H special appearance. So, um, not many other details been shared about what that's supposed to be. So, guys, what what are your thoughts? Anything you want to see or hope to see or fantasy book on, on Triple H and Roman coming back? I want it to be the debut of Odyssey Jones. He got drafted by SmackDown. <laughs> Hasn't been used since. I want Wasn't it? I thought it was Raw. I don't care. I want him on SmackDown. Doesn't matter. Well, that's the trade. 
That is weirdly yeah, Monday specific. Night Raw that was a trade. Uso. First day or so. Smack oh, that's, 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 Here we go. But you know what's crazy? I was thinking about, I was watching, you know, Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso and stuff. Jay Uso is on Raw, but he wears blue. Jimmy yep. Uso on SmackDown, he wears red. This is very similar when AJ Styles was on Raw and he wore blue. And then he went to SmackDown and he changed to red. It's kind of weird about how that worked out. And one other thing I'm tired of podcast doing, and I don't think any of us have done this. A lot of talk about adding people to Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. Every person I have heard on these podcasts, suggestions to be added to that group are all black. Why? You really want to surprise me? Put Charlotte Flair with Bobby Lashley in the street. Hey now. That would be a surprise. It makes sense because she's an elite athlete, just like all three of them. Mm-hmm. But just saying, oh, they need to add someone that's black because they're all black is fucking stupid. Just stop. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. <sighs> Joe, what's your um, expectations, predictions, any of all or none of it all for Roman returning and Triple H back in SmackDown? Uh, Roman will close the show. That's my prediction on that one. I mean, shocker. It's like they'll start with Triple H, they'll end with Roman. And I'm just, I, I don't like that they say season premiere when they never take a week off. <laughs> I know. That's, exactly. that, that, that's what gets me. It's like, if you have to be gone for it to be a premiere. But when you're on every single week, it's not a season premiere. Like, yeah. I, I, that's, that's, so it's going to be a star studded SmackDown, which is great because it's entertaining and it's uh, been a good week for wrestling. So I'm just going to sit back and enjoy, but Roman will end it. Uh, Triple H will begin it. He's probably going to announce the Dusty Classic and then the Men's Classic. No, wait, he's not going to do that. They want to announce that again. <laughs> but he's probably going to announce um, something involving. I'm going to say, I'm going to say War Games is going to get announced oh, for Survivor okay. Series Makes early. Sense. Makes sense. Tag titles. He's going to what? Yeah, the women's yeah. tag t- thing with the women's tag titles. I mean, they must be. Be. and then Chelsea's going to come out and insist to speak to a manager. And saying she can't defend. She's also a manager, so there you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. More Chelsea, the better. Wow. When there did this was... come to be? Joe? Ever since she came back, her character has just been so great. Like Every time she's on there, it just like brings me joy. Love her. Love it. How about you, Kev? Uh, I hope he uh, comes out, announces maybe uh, Ron Breaker joining the, the, the cast or, or the roster. Uh, you know, he lost against Mello. Perfect opportunity. Um, and then he joins some... the Street Profits. Hey, to be honest, I would. No! Uh, no! No Cedric Alexander. No Carmelo I said Brian Hayes, Breaker. No, no Trent Breaker. Williams. No Jade Cargill. Bron no Breaker. Ray, no Bianca Belair. No, none of it. He said Bron, Bron Breaker. Bron Breaker. I don't care what Joe said. Because I just made sense, and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna keep naming people he didn't say. <laughs> some, uh, some like that. Break, hold on, breaking news from Sean Ross App of Fightful. Braun Breaker is Caucasian. Thank you. Back to you guys. <laughs> Even though he looks crustacean, he looks like a lobster. <laughs> yes. Like, oh, like, geez, every time I look at the guy, like he's gonna come out to the, rock lobster. The the, <laughs> the reddest of tan slash like. Burn, <laughs> but oh the God. dude, the dude's so good. Honestly, like, just I hate to sound cliche. He's just a badass. Like, I want to see him appear, even cliche. if it's SmackDown or Raw. <laughs> he he has to appear on one of them, right? He lost in the in the right to to go in that triple threat match. It only makes sense if he if he shows up on NXT again. It's just like, geez, creative. Come on, yeah. and now Triple H is in uh, full well, effect. Creative, he's got to. All right. That's going to be the exciting thing. A real question for the three of you. Yeah. How do you debut Braun Breaker on the main roster? Seriously. Uh, month, well, I love a month the- of vignettes, and then he debuts at the Rumble. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping him as a heel, so I'm probably having him 
go against a pretty top face and like f up a match, a big match like maybe an LA night. Kevin, I'd say if it, if it's SmackDown, <laughs> excuse me, get him a cough drop. Uh, I'll give you. Uh, say if it's Raw, I'll use Raw. Have him. Uh, your throat? <laughs> if it's going to be it's Raw, Xavier Woods or Kofi throat. going against someone. Have him destroy New Day. Kind of like how Brock destroyed the Hardy Boys. Yeah, yeah. Just, just go out there, destroy. Well, the problem is, he's out. like five ten. I know, but he, but he's <laughs> that, like so. So is Big so E. Dumb, but like, it's you know, it's like you know the Trick Williams Carmelo Hayes conversation we had last week. Yeah, Trick is like six five two eight. Got to work a little harder for the smaller guys. You're right. Yeah, I don't know, man. But I by the way, um. We but isn't MJF like five eight? Eh, maybe. maybe. But he he talks like he's like fourteen uh, feet tall. But MJF's on the biggest super indie on the planet. Yeah. Jay, we I didn't touch on this because I know like uh Kev, you talked about like what you did like about AEW. Jay, did you get the chance to go back to watch NXT to to see any highlights that you know what the boys talked about from the other night that maybe you were like, Oh yeah, that was good or what? Um congratulations. You played yourself. I did not watch NXT. Okay. I ran so, out of time. I ran out of time in real life. So all good. All good. So um the the scene of promo, guys. Um, I mean, first off, it's just surreal. I love that the crowd was singing the song and he acknowledged that they were singing the song, going like, Wow, this is great. And then how when Braun interrupted him, this is what triggered this for me. How they took over with the classic Braun Breaker sucks. Yeah. Braun Breaker sucks. And Cena acknowledging it, going, I know this one. I know this song. Because, <laughs> because it's even better with the lyrics changed. Kevin said the other night. I was howling. I rewound that like three times. So, so good. That. So, yeah, that was just, I'm sorry. That was a, a great, surreal. Uh, Episode of NXT, even even the little backstage thing that Cody did with Tony D and Stax. <laughs> Tony- <laughs> bada bing. The Cody bada bing, bada Cody. boom, battle royale. Yeah, yeah. I just love being given the whole lingo and Cody goes, okay, so I'm from Georgia and uh, Stax is like, all right, let me break it down for you. Oh, <laughs> that was fun, that. man. So- that was fun. That sounds good. I'm going to have to find that. Yeah. Definitely get get some time, you know, if you're not too busy, like, I, I don't know what you're up to. Maybe, you know, check it out the Taylor Swift concert movie or something. I no, don't know what you're up to, but today. Or today, Friday. Yeah, I'm going to see the Taylor Swift movie. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. Is. I'm doing it well before uh, school lets out because I don't want to be, you know. <laughs> right, right. Up, but no, I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that movie, but. Uh, the reason I didn't watch Fastlane the other night, I went to an indie show. Now I, you know, I'm a, I, I did a little bit of commentary last month, and um, I went to the IWC, which is the International Wrestling Cartel here in Pittsburgh. Their super indie tournament. This is the 22nd year that they've done it, and I've got a list of some of the people that have been in it and won it, and it's like a who's who of oh. current day wrestlers. Cole Cabana, Jerry Lynn, Josh Alexander, Adam Cole, Josh Gresham, or John Gresham, Wardlow, and the uh, former Pill Man, uh, Brian Ooh. Pillman Jr. This oh. tournament is amazing. Claudio has been in it. I feel like CM Punk did it many years ago. But anyway, this was the first time I went to the tournament live. And the finals ended up being two guys that I had never seen before, but I was like, holy shit, these guys are awesome. And it's Duke Davis, who's part of a team, uh, they're called the main event. And then the uh, other guy was Anthony Primetime Katina. Now, you know, a lot of people don't give indie talent credit for little things. Katina wrestled three times on Saturday, different gear each time, which was totally awesome. And I feel like Davis had different gear, but it was very dark. If you look at the picture that I posted on my socials, uh, Duke Davis was it was his back and he is a just huge dude monstrous dude and his partner uh, again uh, again Jones Jr. He's just as big so like this is a team to be uh, looking out for the main event and uh, Duke Davis ended up winning the tournament 
And it was just a great night of independent wrestling. I say it all the time, wherever you're listening to this, whether you're in Peoria or Des Moines or whatever the New York one, they always say and make fun of Caskills, New York or whatever, go check out an indie show. It's so good. Independent wrestling is the best. Give it a chance and uh, support uh, local independent wrestlers and podcasts like this one. Oh yeah, we'll get I'm sure another uh update on the the indie world from from you after this weekend. So I hope that all goes fantastic. Yeah, man. And that'll do it for this week, uh guys. Uh that's uh the the completion of two of two shows for this week is what I was trying to spit out there. Uh make sure of course you check out at that I, had, pod. I wish I had the I spit in the face of people that are cool or that don't want to be cool when you said spit out. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. Give us your best Carlito. You got something else. I'm sure that'll be equally ridiculous. I uh, spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool. Oh, well, it's good. You get that one. Uh, yeah. All right. Let me go one more. I like a harp. Yeah, it was the it was chimes. Oh, here it is. Oh. Joe, I think you're cool. No, just kidding. You suck. Oh, classic. <laughs> Always good to end on a classic. Uh, I bet of you course, can't get a boner. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Story of our lives. YouTube.com backslash. You're so that, mean. <laughs> that wrestle pod. It's not very uh, nice, Brian. I'm so flustered right now. What a maneuver.net <laughs> is the merchandise link. If you want to get some shirts or pants or whatever we got on there, check it out. One more. One more. Tony Khan's a bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god. We out. That sounds about right. Enjoy wrestling. We will talk to you next week. Hi oh. Thanks for listening. Follow that wrestle pod on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. One, two, three, that's it. Thanks for watching That Wrestling Podcast on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And for more That Wrestling Podcast content, follow at that wrestle pod on social media.